Yo, what's going on man? It's Mo Salim here from TripleYourTea.com and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the effects that fasting has on your testosterone levels, alright? And certainly in my own course of naturally optimizing my testosterone levels, fasting has played a very important role. It, it has allowed me to build muscle, it has allowed me to shred stubborn belly fat, and most importantly, it has allowed me to do these things while not eating chicken breast and broccoli at every single meal, all right? So in this video, I'm gonna go over what exactly is intermittent fasting, why you should consider it, especially if your goal is to naturally optimize your testosterone levels, and thirdly, how you can get started in some simple and very easy steps. All right, so the first point, what is intermittent fasting? Well, there are a number of different methods that people have used to practice intermittent fasting, and some of them include just simply skipping breakfast, eating everything you want during the week and keeping two 24-hour fasts within that week, or keeping a short eating window within which to fit all your meals. All of these methods fall within the realm of intermittent fasting, but if I was to boil it down to one simple definition, it would be a strategic abstinence from caloric consumption for a particular amount of time. So no calories are to be consumed during this period of time, though artificial sweeteners and coffee and tea and stuff that is usually below the 10 calorie mark can be consumed during your fast, all right? So given this definition, all of us already practice a form of fasting every time we go to sleep and every time we open our fast with the break our fast with breakfast. But the thing with intermittent fasting is that it is a strategic abstinence, all right? You're not just going through the motions of what you think you should do. You're actually choosing a very particular time window during which you are not to consume any amount of calories. And all of this leads us to the second point, which is why you should practice intermittent fasting. Well, there are many benefits associated with intermittent fasting, but they can all be narrowed down to the fact that digestion is actually one of your body's most complicated and resource intensive functions, all right? So by extending your overnight fast, you're essentially allowing your body to allocate more of its energy and resources towards many other key tasks. And by doing this, there are a bunch of hormonal benefits that arise, which I'll talk about next. All right, so the first benefit that comes with intermittent fasting is a serious spike in growth hormone levels. In one study, researchers actually found that the short-term fast can increase growth hormone levels by up to two thousand percent and yes two thousand with three zeros now this doesn't mean that your growth hormone levels will be elevated to this extent after your fast is over but it does mean that during your fast your body will be much more likely to burn fat it will increase your focus it will improve your mood and increased growth hormone levels also translate to increased testosterone levels which brings us to the second benefit of intermittent fasting which is an increase in your testosterone. In one study, researchers actually found that a short-term fast can increase testosterone levels by up to 180%. But once again, I wanna emphasize that it's not like your levels will be elevated at this level over the long term, but the point is that a positive interaction definitely exists. And again, I'd encourage you to check out my blog post linked out below because it will discuss each of the individual studies that back up the points that I'm making in this video, all right? So the third reason that you should consider intermittent fasting is because it increases your insulin sensitivity. So just a quick recap, insulin is a master hormone and its primary role is basically extracting energy from glucose molecules and either using them for energy or depositing them into the liver or fat for later use. And insulin sensitivity is basically a measure of how much insulin your body requires to deposit a given amount of glucose. High insulin sensitivity means that only a little bit of insulin is required to deposit that amount of glucose. Low insulin sensitivity, which is basically insulin resistance, means that more and more insulin becomes uh, required by your body to, to deposit that same amount of glucose. And in extreme cases, this can even lead to type 2 diabetes. And the thing with fasting is that it significantly regulates your insulin levels, all right? So by, uh, by increasing your insulin sensitivity, your body is much more likely to use fat as fuel as well as deposit the calories that you're eating into muscle rather than fat, all right? So a lot of studies have backed up the effectiveness that fasting can have on your insulin levels. 
All right, and the next benefit that intermittent fasting can have for your testosterone is that it can help you lower your body fat levels significantly fast. Now, you already know that losing body fat is a matter of the energy balance equation, all right? So if you eat fewer calories than your body burns in any given day, that is the amount of energy that your body will tap into your stored sources of energy, which are fat, all right? So the reason that intermittent fasting works so well to help you lose fat is because First of all, you're eating within a shorter time frame, all right? So definitely you're gonna eat fewer amount of meals during the time period you have allocated for intermittent fasting. So if you are fitting all your meals within an eight hour window, you are much likely to eat less than if you were to fit all your meals within a 12 or 16 hour window, all right? And the second reason why intermittent fasting is so effective at helping you lose fat is because the research has actually shown that fasting significantly boosts your metabolism, which means that you are burning more calories at rest. So intermittent fasting basically influences the energy balance equation from both ends. First, it reduces the calories in since you're eating for a shorter time of period. And second, it increases the calories out because it boosts your metabolism. And this is the reason why so many people, I mean, there are countless results that people have seen online that intermittent fasting has helped them lose upwards of 10, 20, 30, and sometimes even 50 plus pounds, all right? So if getting lean, which is priority number one when it comes to naturally increasing your testosterone levels, is something that you need to do, then definitely consider intermittent fasting because it is a proven way to help you get there faster. And the final reason why you should consider intermittent fasting, especially if uh, testosterone optimization is a priority for you, is because it helps your body fight off inflammation, deal with oxidative stress, and increase cellular repair. Now you can read about all the scientific studies that uh, reference how fasting can benefit these areas in my blog post below. I highly recommend you check that out. But I'm going to go over how intermittent fasting can help you increase cellular repair and how that translates to higher testosterone levels. All right, so with the millions of processes taking place in your body every single day, cells get worn out. Ideally, your body is able to identify these worn out cells and gets rid of them in a process called autophagy. Now, in the reparation process, basically your body rids these cells of toxins and estrogenic chemicals, which in turn would be very beneficial for your hormonal health as a man. And again, you can check out my blog post below, which goes over the study, but research has shown that fasting significantly increases autophagy in the human body, which means that your body is more efficient at getting rid of the cells that have been worn out and causing toxic reactions in your body. So yeah, man, those are a bunch of reasons that intermittent fasting is something that you should consider, especially if natural testosterone optimization is a priority for you. It's something that I've been doing for yeah, more than three years now, I'd say, and it's definitely something that has allowed me to stay lean, build muscle, and do so while maintaining a lifestyle which is enjoyable and does not neglect me of indulging in my favorite foods every now and then. With that being said, let's dive into how you can quickly get started with intermittent fasting starting today or tomorrow, depending if you've eaten already or not. All right, so the first method of intermittent fasting that you can use to get started is the just skip breakfast method. So after waking up, you simply push your first meal four to six to eight hours after waking up whenever you feel uh, like you should. You know, four to eight hours is the time period that I go in and I keep it flexible. And uh, yeah, so push your first meal four to eight hours after waking up and keep your last meal anywhere from four to eight hours after having your first meal. So your eating window uh, remains within the four to eight hour time frame, depending on whatever your preferences are, all right? And if you get hungry in between that time frame that you wake up and you have your first meal, then I like to uh, fit in a strategic black coffee because caffeine helps to blunt appetite and boost metabolism at the same time. So this is the simplest method to get started. And if you wanna try it, simply push your first meal four to eight hours after waking up and your last meal four to eight hours after that. All right, and the second method that you can use to get started with intermittent fasting is the 16-8 method or the lean gains method. And this was a method popularized by Martin Burkham over at the leangains.com blog. And I definitely think that he's the guy who actually brought intermittent fasting to the mainstream or at least had a major role in doing so. And with the 16-8 method, it's very researched, it's very heavily, uh, practiced amongst thousands of people around the world. I don't know if it's tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands at this point, but it is this it is also a pretty easy way to get started with it. So basically it's 16-8, 16 16-hour 16 fast, eight hour eating window. 
you choose an eight hour eating window, whether that's 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. or 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., whatever eight hour window you wanna choose, choose it and then fit all your meals within that window. And this is the method that I got started with and I switched over to the just skip breakfast method because it allows a bit of more flexibility. So in case I wanna go out and eat with my friends or family or have a drink or something like that, I'm not too rigid in terms of when I'm gonna eat, all right? With the just skip uh, breakfast method, you are keeping it open with that four to eight hour time span in terms of when you're gonna fit your meals, all right? So you can extend it depending on if you plan on having a dinner at night or you can reduce it depending on if you wanna grab some breakfast or something like that, all right? So I'd recommend that you get started with the 16-8 method because it is definitely gonna keep you more in line with actually following through. And then over time, once you have adjusted to it and your body has adjusted to it and you're not getting those hunger pangs first thing in the morning, then you can skip over to the just skip breakfast method and uh, be more flexible with your approach, all right? And finally, if you don't want to do fasting every single day, this is uh, there's another method called the eat, stop, eat method. And with this, basically what you're doing is that uh, you eat regularly however you're used to eating, but you keep two 24 hour fasts in between the week, all right? So let's say you have your, uh, you choose Monday and Thursday as your two fasting days. So on Monday at 7 p.m., you stop eating, and then you have uh, the fast go from Monday 7 p.m. to Tuesday 7 p.m. when you open your fast. And the same thing would go from Thursday where you have your last meal at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and then you open it up at 7 p.m. on Thursday, all right? And people have seen similar results with this as well. I personally do implement a 24 hour fast into my routine as well, but I do so probably, I'd say three, yeah, once a week, I'd say at this point. Yeah, like right now, I'm currently in the middle of a 24 fast, 24 hour fast as well. And there is some research saying that uh, a 24 hour fast can actually speed up autophagy. That's why I don't know if you can tell right now, but I'm extremely hyper focused, or at least I like to think that I am. And uh, I was procrastinating on this video for a while, so. And the only way I actually got to it was by implementing my fast and it's making a video about um, fasting. So that's kind of some inception shit happening right there. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, if this is something that you want to experiment with, you can definitely check it out as well. So yeah, man, that about wraps it up. And just on a last note, I will tell you that there was a study in which they brought in like over a thousand people and they, stead, uh, they looked at all their habits from smoking to sleeping to eating to lifting weights to a bunch of habits. And the one habit that correlated with 40% less clogged arteries was that these uh, men actually fasted for once every single month, all right? So fasting is simply a matter of shrinking the amount of hours that you eat and that will allow you to experience a bunch of hormonal benefits as well, all right? And on a final note, definitely check out my blog post below because it goes into more detail about the studies and how you can get started with step-by-step -step instructions. Plus, you'll get a look at some of the videos about people, famous people, I mean, everyone loves famous people, who practice intermittent fasting. And uh, some of these include Terry Crews, Joe Rogan. And uh, I was actually watching a video of, uh, what's his name? Can't forget, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now. GSP, George St. Pierre. And he is a huge proponent proponent of intermittent fasting as well all right so definitely check out my blog post i hope that this video has provided you with value and if it has the alarm bells ringing about how breakfast is the most important meal of the day jeff definitely i go over that in my blog post as well all right with all that being said this has been mo Salim from triplet.com i hope that this video provided you with value i think i said that already but uh yeah i'll see you soon